Hello and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who's helping to lead worship today, we welcome you. We are so honored that you are spending this time with Douglas Avenue in worship today. It is our Stories to Live By Summer series. It is a beautiful day that we've been given, so welcome to worship. We want to encourage everyone to use our contact form. If it's your first time to join with us in worship, if it's your millionth time to join with us in worship, whatever, use that contact form today. This is a way that we can get to know you, that we can be able to be in touch with you, that we can send you our e-newsletter, which has all of the information about all of the opportunities for worship and small groups and service with Douglas Avenue. And also on that contact form is a place for you to put your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. So we ask that everyone use that contact form today. Now, when we do gather together, we covenant to participate and to be a blessing in our online worship. When we covenant to participate, that means that we're going to fully participate. This isn't just a random video you are watching. This is worship together. So we encourage you to turn off other devices, other distractions, really focus in, maybe light a candle if that helps you, and then go ahead and do what we're doing. When it's time to pray, pray. When it's time to sing, stand up and sing, and really participate in worship. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. Blessing. And that means that in all the ways we are together, the way we're in the comment section, the way that we're with people we may be gathered with for this time, just the way we are with the community, that all of it is a blessing to everyone that is involved. And all of this is just a super blessing for our world. We're going to continue now with worship. And I invite you to join in this time of centering music and really focus in and get prepared for our time of worship. Welcome to worship. Please join us in this call to worship. Your line is, God's light shines in us. Let us practice saying that together now. God's light shines in us. Come and see. God's light is shining brightly. God's light shines in us. When we follow Jesus, God's light shines in us. When we show mercy and compassion, God's light shines in us. We are the light of the world. God's light shines in us. Please join us in singing, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light.
I'm Diane Steinbaker. I'm a member of Merriam Circle Prayer Group and Zephyr Sunday School class. Please join me in a spirit of prayer as I pray aloud our opening prayer. God of all creation, you have made us to be salt and light in a tasteless, shadowed world. Send your Holy Spirit to open our ears, eyes, and hearts to understand and act on your purpose for us. Give us strength and courage to proclaim and show your love that others may see your good works through us, may give you glory, and be moved to serve you. Amen. Please join me in sharing the peace of Christ. You can say, peace be with you and respond and also with you. Share that in the comments with one another, with me, and with these folks in our church community. Peace be with you. Hello, we are the Rao family. I am Ashley, and this is Barry, and we have Lucy, Penny, and Wendy. Peace be, be with, with you. you. Hi, I'm Randy Ginder. I'm on several committees here at Douglas. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Damon Stotts, and I'm glad to be visiting today. Peace be with all of you. Hi, my name is Joy Brown. Hi, my name is Karis Brown. I'm in the youth group in Bell Choir. And we're, and I'm in the youth group too. Peace, Peace be, be with you. you. Yay, it's time for small talk. I want to encourage all of the children who are with us in online worship to get in really close to your device and your screen so that you can see everything that goes on with small talk. This time is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and Laud the Lamb, her assistant. So come in right now, really close, everybody, for small talk. Hello, everyone. I am Miss Laurie, and this is Laud, and Laud's helper, Cohen, and we're here today to talk about light, specifically God's light. And we have here a flashlight. It's kind of like God's light. God's light that is in us, He wants us to share that light with the world. Well, I can't quite share it with the world today, but I can share it. <laughs> Okay, Laud, we're not telling ghost stories right now. I can share that light today with Luna. Luna loves light, as you can see. So we thought, what better way to show sharing God's light than with Laud and Luna? <coughs> And I'm pretty sure Luna <laughs> wants to share that light as well. So just remember that that little light you have, you know that song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let your light shine for the world to see. Have a great day, guys. Bye. Did you see her spinning? Uh Hello, I'm Rita Brinkley, and I'm a member at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. <clears throat> Today's reading from the Bible is Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. I will be reading from the message version of the Bible. Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. Jesus taught them, Let me tell you why you are here. You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on the hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. May God bless our heart 
our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. I hope you are enjoying our summer worship series, Stories to Live By. Of course, our Bible is an entire story to live by, but this summer we're lifting up some of those particular stories or verses that have become particularly meaningful for the various preachers that are leading us in worship throughout this season. You do not want to miss a week. And I encourage you to join in worship online always, or join us in worship in the sanctuary at 11 o'clock at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I want to remind you that we'd also love to hear from you about some of your favorite songs to live by. Let us know about hymns and songs that you hold in your heart, that you carry uh, with you, that guide you along life's journey. And you can just put that into an email to me, to the church office. You can let us know in the comment section, on Facebook, any one of those ways. Let us know what one of your songs to live by is and maybe why that is. And we'll do our best to incorporate that into our worship this summer. I'm honored to get to share with you another one of my stories to live by. Uh, last week, I shared a story that has guided me since I was a child, Jesus bringing the children close to him. Today's story really took hold of my heart for the first time uh, that when I heard it read from the message translation of the Bible. The message is a translation and paraphrase of the Bible by Eugene Peterson, and that was published in, its, in full in 2002. Peterson uses a very simple translation of the Greek and the Hebrew and incorporates American idioms and language throughout his work. I find it sometimes to be very powerful and helpful to hear stories from the Bible in new ways when I, when I get to read them from the message. So we occasionally use the message in worship just for that reason. It was more than 20 years ago uh, now that I heard this scripture our scripture for today that I heard it read during a worship service at a district clergy gathering in Massachusetts, which is where I was living and serving in a United Methodist Church at that time. Much like John Wesley so long ago uh, that where he went reluctantly to a gathering on Aldersgate Street to hear a reading of Martin Luther's preface to the Book of Romans, I too had gone very reluctantly to this required gathering of United Methodist pastors in my area. I wasn't expecting much, if anything, out of this gathering, this experience, and I was really, frankly, kind of put out from having been told I had to be there. You know how being required to show up somewhere kind of brings out the oppositional defiance? Well, it brought mine out that day for sure. At this time, I was working in a ministry of transformation with a new church start that, in the words of leadership, had failed. I was brought in, it was my first appointment as a United Methodist pastor to be the follow-up pastor to just make it work one way or another. I had been working with this congregation in the community for about a year and it was just so hard. The uh, congregation was tired and anxious, feeling like failures and unsure that they should be a church. So there was that going on. And I was sad. I was still fresh in grief from the death of my son. I was worried that I wasn't really called to be into ministry. I was tired. It had been a rough couple of years. I was pretty sure that I did not have the knowledge, the skills, the resources needed to do this ministry that I had been assigned to. So I was there, but I was questioning all of my life choices, from what I'd had for breakfast to uh, whether I needed to be in ministry at all. You know, life. So in my reluctance and tired and sad and inadequacy, I was sitting in a pew in a church I don't even remember where, and the worship leader read this passage, Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. This was not a new passage of the Bible to me. I grew up in church. I knew Jesus' stories about salt and light, seeds and crops, sheep and shepherd. I had been to seminary. I had studied and did study the Bible. I had prayed with these scriptures. I knew Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, which is where this particular set of verses find their home. But that day, when the verses were read, it was as if I heard Jesus' words for the first time. 
like they were for me, really for me. You know, Holy Spirit. Let me tell you why you are here. You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of the earth. You're here to be light, bringing out the God colors of the world. I'm putting you on a light stand. Shine. Salt seasoning to bring out God flavors. Light to bring out God colors. Salt and light. Be salt. Be light. Not be God, not be all the answers and have all the skills, not contain all wisdom and knowledge and experience, not be perfect, not do it all right, but to get in there alongside what God is doing and point it out, bring it out, show it. Trust that God is doing what God is doing and that my being there is not so much an accident, but is meant to be. Be present, be salt and light, partner with God. Joyfully bring out those flavors and colors of God's work, God's love, God's joy, God's healing, God's transformation. Melt on into it and be a part of God's great recipe of transforming love, God's light-filled, color-soaked, transforming power in this world. I can't claim that my heart was strangely warmed like John Wesley, but I can say that the tears of relief and love and purpose and belovedness flowed. My heart was held well in those moments and assurance was mine. Be salt, be light continues to be a regular phrase of prayer for me, a regular reminder of my place in God's work in our world, a shorthand when I'm in a difficult place in my ministry. What do I do? Well, Meredith, why don't you try to be what Jesus has said you are, salt and light. Look for, get on board with, point to, shine on, melt into what God is already doing. And I can say to this day that this has always been a good thing. Not always easy, not always beautiful and lovely and all roses and daisies, but true and real and carries me forward to who and how I need to be. I think that very often we talk about light and Jesus' use of the image in so many different ways. The Bible is full of light imagery. Our music is full of it. Jesus is the light of the world. We who love him and are named as light meant to illuminate the world. Light is a rich, beautiful, and powerful image. But today I want to share a little bit more with you about being salt. Jesus tells us to be, well, salty. When Jesus tells us to be salty, he doesn't really mean it the way we might use it in popular culture. We use the word salt to talk about people, we used to anyway, about people who had salty language, using cuss words like a a sprinkling of seasoning over their sentences and expressions, like dropping the F-bomb every other word. Today, when the hip kids talk uh, about being salty, they generally mean that you're being crabby, sassy, even to the point of possibly being cruel to the people who are around you. And the use of salty language probably goes along with that too. But this is not what Jesus is talking about when he says we, his followers, are salty. Instead, Jesus is very much talking about how we use salt in cooking and flavoring, about how salt magnifies other flavors in food. And any of you who cook or bake, you probably have experienced this very simple, basic truth about the use of salt. You put a little salt into your cookie batter. You put salt into the bread dough, in the spaghetti sauce, on the roast, in the water that you're gonna cook the pasta in. Sweet, savory, it doesn't really matter. It all needs just a little bit of salt to make those flavors sing. And so when we are salt for God, we help God's purposes, God's love, God's kingdom, God's flavors sing. We melt into what God is doing and help bring out the God goodness, the God flavors, as I shared before. 
I believe the second thing Jesus may have been talking about when he talks about being salt is the value of salt. Salt was and is so important for cooking food and for preserving food. In Jesus' day, there was no refrigeration. So salt was an important preservative to keep food safe and edible. Salt is also a necessary nutrient for our bodies to work correctly. As such, salt was incredibly valuable and even somewhat rare during Jesus' life. Today, we live in a world that is saturated with salt, where most of us have to pay attention to it for a different reason. Often there's so much salt in our food, particularly in pre-prepared or restaurant or processed foods, that many of us are trying to reduce the amount of salt in our diets. But in Jesus' time, this was not the case at all. In fact, it was exactly the opposite. People often didn't get enough salt. Salt was so valuable, it was used as a universal currency, the way that we might think of trading gold or dollars or euros or Bitcoin. Sometimes Roman soldiers were paid their regular wage in salt. Actually, the Latin word for salt, sal, is the root, word, root for our word salary. Regular pay for a job is really, literally, your salt allowance, your salary. Even today, when somebody is not doing their job well, folks might use the old Roman saying, they're not worth their salt. So when Jesus says, be salt, I think there are these important things to remember here, to, to let seep into your heart. The first is, you are incredibly valuable and beloved of God. You are intrinsically necessary. You and your God-given saltiness, bringing out the God flavors in your family, your circles, your work, in your little corner of the world. You are not an accident. You are rare and beautiful and precious and necessary. Don't forget that. The second is that Jesus seems to have this real aspirational value for us living as Christians in the world. When he says his followers are to be salt, he wants us to live in such a way that we bring out the best in the flavor and the character of other people around us, that we bring out the God flavors in others and in situations. I'm gonna say that one more time because I wanna make sure you hear it, to be salt is to live and work and speak and act in such a way that we bring out the best in the flavor and character of others and situations. Not the worst, not the hate, not the prejudices, not the ignorance or the perpetuation of lies, but the best, the truth, the God flavor. And I think we do this through the basic principle of love. When we act in love, in encouragement, in hopefulness, in sacrifice, in truth, in caring, valuing the least and most underpowered, we create and insist upon an environment where other people can live their best selves as well, which spreads like the good use of salt in and through people, their lives, situations, and throughout the world. In the living of these days, I'm pretty sure that being salt is more important than ever. Jesus is seeking for us to be salt, to live the basic principle of love in our words and actions, in our social media and driving down the street, in the ways we engage in difficult conversations and in seeking the common good. I believe that if Christians took this basic direction of Jesus to heart and acted like salt, not salty, but as salt that brings out the God flavors in others and in our world, we will surely grow closer to the reality of God's kingdom in all the places that we are, right now and right here. So, be salt and be light. Amen. Good morning. Please join us in singing, My Savior, My God. I am not skilled to understand what God has willed, what God has planned. I only know at His right hand stands 
one who is my savior i take him at his word and deed christ died to save me this i read and in my heart i find a need of him to be my savior Nancy Vereen, lay leader at Douglas Avenue Methodist Church. Let us pray. Precious Lord, as we gather today around your name, we pray that you will fill our hearts, our minds, and our souls. Transform us, Lord, and make us more like you. We gather together to give you thanks and praise your greatness. Help us to become the light of the world, where our light is a beacon to all others showing them what it means to be a Christian. Holy Lord, everything we need is found in you. For those of us who come feeling broken, bring restoration. For those of us who are feeling weak or ill, bring strength. For those who come weeping, bring joy. For those who come feeling shame, bring freedom. For those who are burdened, bring rest and peace. Touch those who are grieving. Be with our community and our world. Watch over our Compass program as they are serving 650 students this summer. Guide their teachers and leaders. We give thanks for those that participated in the His Home Bicycle Ride. We pray for the success of the Wibble program and ask you to give strength to all of those who are struggling with addiction and recovery. We ask you to be with the families and victims of the Florida building collapse. There are many joys and concerns that we haven't mentioned. Please take a moment to lift those to the Lord. As another wave of COVID reaches across our country, we pray that people will continue to accept the COVID vaccine. For those who are hesitant and fearful, we pray their worries will be put aside by sound and truthful medical advice. We give thanks for our God's Creation Family Camp that happened this week. May all those who participated come away with fond memories and a better understanding of your love. In closing, we offer the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Being generous with our financial gifts, with our living, with our services, like being salt in the world. It brings out the God colors and flavors and everything that is important and needed for God's kingdom. And we thank you so much for the ways that you are giving so generously into the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We encourage you to continue to give your financial gifts. You can do that online through our online giving portal, and the link to that is pinned right in the comment section. You can give automatically using your financial institution or ours. If you need help setting that up, just let us know in the church office. And of course, you can send in checks right to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Thank you for all of these ways that you continue to give, that you make the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church a reality through that generosity. There are so many ways that you can put your faith and that generosity into action with the ministries of Douglas Avenue. And we want to encourage you to read your e-newsletter to learn about all of those. And I'm just gonna lift up a couple right now. I wanna thank you for all of your support for our first community COVID-19 vaccination clinic that we had in June. We are now preparing for our follow-up clinic that is set for Thursday, July 8th from 4 to 7 p.m. There is opportunity for everyone to help make this second vaccination clinic a success. You can give a financial gift to help underwrite the clinic. Just use our online giving portal and choose vaccination clinic in the special offering menu. We need help to recruit people to be vaccinated, particularly in spreading the word around our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church neighborhood and registering people. We need help with setup the week of the clinic and of course help on the day of the clinic. And we need you to pray for this effort and for the safety and health of our community in combating COVID-19. Please let us know if you can help with this effort. Use the link in the comment section or the one found in our e-newsletter, or please contact the church office. And then you are invited to join in our next session of Vital Conversations on Race, which are happening, happening this Monday, June 28th at 6.30 p.m. Listen on your own to episodes of the podcast, Hard Candy and Fruit Snacks. That's intriguing, isn't it? Well, it is. Learn more in the e-newsletter or call the church office for more information and links to join in this time of small group discussion, learning, and prayer. And I do encourage you to use that contact form and let us know your email address. Our e-newsletter is just the best, most up-to-date way to know everything that's going on with Douglas Avenue and to be able to connect in and so that we can connect with you to help you grow in your life and in your ministry and in your faith. Thank you for all of your generous giving. Please join us in singing, Bring Forth the Kingdom. Breathe. 
Thank you so much for joining in this time of online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It has been an honor and pleasure to have this time with you. We hope that you will join with us again for online worship or come join with us for worship in the sanctuary at 11 a.m. on Sundays. Uh, it is so good to be able to join together in this way, to be able to support each other and love each other in worship and to be church together in all the ways that we are church together. I encourage you again to use that contact form so that we can be in connection with one another and we can get you that e-newsletter and so that we can pray with you. Use the place there for your prayer requests that go right to our pastors and to our prayer team. And now as you go into your day, go knowing that God loves you, that Jesus calls you to be salt and to be light in the world and that the Holy Spirit will comfort you and will empower you to do just that. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.